In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the gas laws, and the gas laws can be used to link pressures, volumes, and temperatures of gases together. So what we would tend to have is we would have a gas at a given pressure, volume, and temperature. We would apply some new conditions to that gas, and then we would be able to recalculate the pressure, volume, and temperature once the changes have been made. Now the equation that we have displayed there is called the ideal gas equation, and here we see that P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. The 1 represents the initial conditions, and the 2 represents the secondary conditions after either a pressure has been applied, a volume change has occurred, or a temperature change has occurred. So underneath the equations we have the three variables, pressure, P, which is measured in pascals, or pascals is the SI units, volume, V, the SI units is meters cubed, and for temperature T, we need to use the Kelvin scale. So pressures can be represented in different ways. Sometimes we see pressures represented in bar. Sometimes we see pressures measured in megapascals, PSI. There's various different units that can be used for pressure. But the main ones that we're going to be interested in is bar and megapascals. Now megapascals is something we should be familiar with. Mega means million. So if we had a given number of megapascals, we would need to multiply it by 10 to the 6, and that would give us the number of pascals. But bar's a little bit different. And first of all, the conversion factor to get from bar to pascals is times 10 to the 5. So it's an unusual measure. It doesn't stick with our convention of killer, 10 to the 3, mega, 10 to the 6. And the reason we operate in bar sometimes is because one bar is assumed to be atmospheric pressure. So atmospheric pressure, P atmos, is often assumed to be 1 times 10 to the 5 pascals. Now there will be some variation from that depending on whether we're experiencing high or low pressures, but it's approximately 1 times 10 to the 5 pascals. Therefore 2 bar is equivalent to 2 atmospheres. 4 bar, 4 atmospheres, and so on. So that's why we see bar sometimes used to measure pressures. And the other one I'm going to speak about briefly is temperature in Kelvin. Now we're used to operating in degrees C. Well, to get from degrees C to Kelvin, we need to add 273 to give us degrees Kelvin. So 20 degrees C, as an example, would be 293 Kelvin. Without going into too much detail, Kelvin represents absolute temperatures. And it's believed that if we ever cooled a particle down to zero Kelvin, it would stop vibrating. Particles vibrate at any temperature, and at zero Kelvin, it's assumed that those particles would stop vibrating, although that temperature's never been achieved. And it forms our basis for temperature calculations when we apply the gas laws. So if we refer back to our ideal gas equation, we can do a number of things with this. If we're doing a calculation and the question or the scenario specifies that temperature is constant, then we can just cancel T1 and T2 out if they're equal. And when we cancel T1 and T2 out, we would be left with P1 V1 equals P2 V2. So it's a variation of the ideal gas equation. That equation there is actually called Boyle's Law. P1 V1 equals P2, V2. We might find ourselves in another scenario, so if we return to our general gas equation and we'll reintroduce T1 and T2, we may find ourselves in a scenario where pressure is constant, or the question specifies that there's no change in pressure, in which case we could cancel out P1 and P2, because they're constant, they're the same. And then we would be left with V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Now that equation there is called Charles' Law, but once again, it's just a variation on the ideal gas equation that we have on the left there. Now my recommendation for all questions involving gases of this type, or ideal gases, is to always begin with the ideal gas equation, rather than trying to remember these two variants for Boyle's Law and Charles' Law. Because if we always remember the ideal gas equation, and we read the question or the context of the question, we can always cancel out anything that remains constant. So it forms a good starting point for these types of questions. So let's look at a couple of examples of how we would apply this. 
So in this example, we have air contained in a piston or a cylinder, and no new air can enter that cylinder, and the air that's trapped there is unable to escape. So what we have is a closed system with a fixed quantity of gas, and we're going to perform some operations on that gas. Now, the gas is at a pressure of 2.5 bar. We see that from P1 there. It occupies a volume of 375 centimetres cubed at a temperature of 25 degrees C. That represents our gas or our air in its initial conditions. But what we're going to do first of all, so question number one, is we're going to decrease the volume to 25 centimetres cubed, but we're going to do that at constant temperature. Hopefully you can visualise what's happening here. If we decrease the volume, then the piston head is going to move from right to left, and that's going to compress the gas. Now before we go to our equation, we need to adjust the units of some of these variables. So first of all, we have P1 is 2.5 bar. Now previously, we said that bar is times 10 to the 5 pascals. So what we actually have here is 2.5 times 10 to the 5 pascals. We'll come back to our volume in a moment. We have a temperature of 25 degrees C. Well, to get from degrees C to Kelvin, we need to add 273. 25 plus 273 is 298 Kelvin. And we can also see here that V2 is in centimetres cubed and needs to be converted to metres cubed. Now the way that we're going to convert these is using a box trail. And by a box trail, I mean that we know how to get from centimetres to metres. The way that we get from centimetres to metres is by dividing by 100. And we know that because 100 centimetres equals 1 metre. But we have to take care here because we don't have centimetres. What we have is centimetres cubed and centimetres cubed. So to get from centimetres cubed to metres cubed, what we actually need to do is divide by our linear conversion of 100 cubed. So we're actually dividing by a million. So to get from centimetres to metres, we divide by 100 Therefore, to get from centimetres cubed to metres cubed, we divide by 100 cubed. So let's do that now. We have 375 divided by 100 cubed, which gives us 3.75 times 10 to the minus 4, and our units there is metres cubed. And we have 25 centimetres cubed divided by 100 cubed, gives us 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5 metres cubed. So now we have all of our variables in standard international units. So now we can go to our ideal gas equation, which states that P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. But if we review the context of our question, it specifies that T1 equals T2. Therefore, T1 and T2 disappear. We would be left with P1V1 equals P2V2. Now the next step is to identify what we're trying to solve this for, and we're trying to find P2. So we need to get P2 on its own. Well the way that we would get P2 on its own there is by dividing each side by V2. So divide V2 each side is our operation. And when we divide each side by V2, we're going to be left with P2 equals P1 times V1, all divided by V2. And now we're ready to input our numbers. P2 equals, well P1, we've just said, is 2.5 times 10 to the 5. And I'm going to put that in brackets to remind myself that it's standard form. I'm going to times that by V1. Well V1, we've already said, is 3.75 times 10 to the minus 4. And I'm going to divide all of that by V2, which is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5. Once again in brackets as a reminder that it's standard form. When I run that through my calculator, I get a value of P2 equal to 3,750,000 pascals. But if we look back at the original question, it specified that the pressure was in bar. So I'm going to express my final answer in bar. If I wanted to express that answer in kilopascals, then all I would do is I would knock off the last three zeros. So that answer there is the same as 3,750 kilopascals.
If I wanted to express it in megapascals, I would knock off another three zeros. So 3.75 megapascals. But I don't. I want to express this answer in bar, which is 10 to the 5, or 5 zeros. Therefore, I'm going to go back 5 zeros, or 5 decimal places, giving me 37.5 bar. So our volume has decreased from 375 centimetres cubed to 25 centimetres cubed, but our pressure has increased from 2.5 bar to 37.5 bar. Let's look at another example. So this time, I'm specifying that the pressures are remaining constant, P2 equals P1. But what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to heat the gas up. I'm going to heat the air from 25 degrees C up to 205 degrees C. And then I'm going to calculate the volume occupied by the gas. Well, when we heat gases, they expand. So what we're going to expect to happen here is as this gas gets hotter under constant pressure is it's going to push back against the piston head and the volume it occupies is going to increase. First thing we need to do is to convert 205 degrees to Kelvin. 205 plus 273 is 478. And now we're ready to start inputting some values. So we can begin with P1V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. However, P1 and P2 are equal. There's no change in pressure. And we're left with V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. We need to calculate V2. So our operation to get V2 on its own this time is times by T2 each side. And times in T2 each side gives me V2 equals V1 T2 over T1. Now I could have written that slightly differently. I could have written that as V1 over T1 times T2. But those two are equivalent. V1 T2 over T1 is the same as a V1 over T1 times T2. So let's plug in some values. V2 then equals V1, 3.75 times 10 to the minus 4. So the volume occupied is the same as before. T2 we have now is 478 Kelvin. And T1 is 298 Kelvin. And when we run that through the calculators, we get 6.015 times 10 to the minus 4 meters cubed. We know it's meters cubed because we've been working in SI units throughout. So if we refer to our original question, the volume was specified in centimetres cubed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert my answer in metres cubed to centimetres cubed. Now if you recall, to go from centimetres cubed to metres cubed, we divided by 100 cubed. And I'll just write this in the bottom left corner. Cm to metres, we divided by 100. Cm cubed to metres cubed, we divided by 100 cubed. So if we want to go the opposite way, then what we need to do is times by our conversion factor of 100 cubed. So we take our answer in centimetres cubed, we multiply it by 100 cubed, and we get 601.5 centimetres cubed. So we've heated our gas from 25 degrees C to 205 degrees C at constant pressure, and the volume has increased from 375 centimetres cubed to 602 centimetres cubed. It's really important that we use our temperatures in Kelvin for this one, otherwise we would get the wrong answers. So if we'd used a temperature in degrees C at the top and bottom there, we would have ended up with a completely different answer, and the answer would have been wrong. We must work in Kelvin here and here. Let's do one more example. And in this example, we're going to start with the same initial conditions a pressure of 2.5 bar, a volume of 375 centimetres cubed, and a temperature of 25 degrees C. But this time we're going to perform two operations. We're going to increase the pressure. We're going to pressurise the gas. And we're also going to increase the temperature. And what we're going to do is calculate the new volume. So this time we start with our ideal gas equation. But we're unable to cancel any variables. And the reason we can't cancel any variables is because nothing's remaining constant. 
we want to get v2 on its own, so we're going to need to do a couple of steps. The first thing we need to do is multiply each side by t2. I'm just going to swap the sides here. We've got p2 v2 equals p1 v1 t2 over t1. So all I've done there is multiply each side by t2. When I multiplied the right hand side by t2, the divide by t2 disappeared. And when I multiplied the left hand side by t2, the t2 appears on the top of the fraction. So p1 v1 t2 over t1. Now we need v2 on its own. So what I'm going to do next is divide each side by p2. And now I'm going to get p1 v1 t2 divided by t1 p2. Now that seems complicated, but if we remember what we do when we rearrange an equation, if we divide our left side by p2, p2 v2 divided by p2, that p2 disappears, we're left with v2, and then we have p1 v1 t2 over t1 divided by p2, and we end up with a p2 on the bottom of the fraction. So it seems complex, but all we're doing is using the same principles that we've already learned about rearranging equations. So we end up with quite a large sum to do here. We've got v2 equals p1 in standard form, 2.5 times 10 to the 5, times v1, 3.75 times 10 to the minus 4, t2, 478, just take care here because it's t2, not t1. I'm going to divide all of that by t1, which is 298 times p2 16 bar now although we haven't specified there 16 bar is 16 times 10 to the 5 pascals for the reasons we've already discussed so 16 times 10 to the 5 now you need to take care when you input this into your calculator but running that through your calculator gives you a volume v2 equal to 9.399 times 10 to the minus 5 meters cubed. Now once again, we're going to express that in centimeters cubed. So I'm going to times my answer by 100 cubed, the same as I did before, and I get an answer of 93.99 centimeters cubed. So the difference with this question is none of those variables remained constant. So we began with our ideal gas equation, we rearranged for the variable that we were trying to find, in this case v2, and then we just inputted our values the same as we did with the previous two examples.